Hello everyone, my name is Pule Baptiste and welcome to another session of our Becoming series where we come together to learn about careers in energy efficiency. We are grateful to the two sponsors who make this series possible, Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. Both sponsors are key in growing the Canadian energy efficiency workforce and we could not do this without them. The Becoming series is where we meet leaders in the sector and hear their story of how they got started, what skills are important for their role and advice they have for people looking to follow in their footsteps. I also want to start this event with a land acknowledgement. I live and work in Montreal, Quebec. Montreal is located on unceded indigenous land. The Ganyatahar Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters of Bridge Bay, otherwise known as Montreal. I invite you to learn about the land you are on and deepen your understanding of the history of the nations whose land you live on. So we are so excited to have you, Sarah. The floor is yours. Thanks for that introduction, Chloe. And thank you to Efficiency Canada for inviting me to speak. I think this is a really powerful series and it's really interesting to learn about other fields in the energy efficiency sector. And I'm happy to share my experience as well. So I am a building science consultant. And throughout this presentation, I hope that I get to answer a few questions of what is building science? Why is it important for energy efficiency? Who is a building science consultant? Where do we find these building science consultants working? And how do I become one? So my name is Ciara Gibson, and I am currently a building science consultant with Morrison Hirschfield. It's an engineering consulting company that is across many areas of engineering, so industrial, technology, telecom, transportation, environment, and water, and it's across North America and an office in India. But what I work in is the building specialty services. So what is building science? Now, building science is a really broad area. But I like to think of it as the perfect intersection of building materials, building performance, and building systems. So when we're looking at building materials, what are new existing buildings made of? From the concrete, the masonry, the sealants, the windows, the insulation, various barriers that are installed, what are those inside of the build? What are they made of and how are they going into performance over its lifetime. So how long does it last? What does the deterioration look like? And how effective is it at doing what its role is in the building? Then once we have those, it's also the interaction of all these systems with the mechanical vac systems and how the occupants use the building. All three of these systems really work together under building science, and we can study each and every one of these different areas. But for me personally, I focus on the building envelope. And it's just because the building envelope has a really important role in our buildings. It's our separation from the interior condition space and exterior environmental conditions. And as a building envelope, we're focusing on all those elements of the building. So it's the roof, the walls, the windows and doors, and even down to the foundations. Building science really focuses more on those waterproofing system that separates the below grade conditions with the other exterior conditions of a building. So why is it important for energy efficiency? Specifically, buildings and the envelope help to separate the interior and exterior space. So we can really control the efficiency of a building by controlling its envelope and the heat loss from a building. So if we have a really energy efficient envelope, we can have a really energy efficient building. And this goes for new construction and existing construction rehabilitation. Things like minimizing the air leakage in a building, the watershedding capabilities, reducing its water infiltration, 
and reducing and eliminating condensation risks through it help to make the building more energy efficient, especially as Canada is striving towards meeting net zero emissions targets, making building envelopes more and more efficient. And high performance is crucial to meeting those targets overall. So what do careers in building science look like? Like I said, it's really broad and there are many fields you can specialize under the umbrella of building science. So you can be a building enclosure specialist or a building envelope engineer that looks at the building as a whole, or you can go even more specific and focus just on glazing, just on the windows, the doors, canopies, and skylights, and how optimizing those specific systems. Then it also is applicable for new construction and existing building rehabilitations. You also find building sign consultants doing building condition, being building condition assessors and looking at how buildings are performing over its lifetime, looking at capital costs later on, and how we can improve the building over time. There are a lot of different pathways that you can go into working as a building science consultant. There are specialist programs, degree programs, and then there are a lot of new architectural engineering programs. You can find building scientists have backgrounds in a variety of areas. They are architects, they are engineers, they are mechanical engineers. So really, building science covers a broad area of work. And because it follows a broad area of work, you find building science consultants working at an engineering consulting firm like myself, or you find them also in the general contractor field, you find them working in government, doing a lot of academic research for building materials and in product manufacturing. So personally, how did I become a building science consultant? I will start with a disclaimer that I did not know about building science very early on in my career in studying and pursuing engineering. And I didn't have the typical path, but I still found myself in the building science field. So I chose civil engineering really as a suggestion from my dad because he did engineering. So why not do engineering? But as I went and follow along with the program, I really realized that I like the field of engineering and building specifically. I like the fact that I can walk around and see what my contribution is to the community, see how, oh, I worked on this project later on, or I know how this factors into how the building is made. I can really see it firsthand what my contribution or my work is in the community I'm living and working in. So in 2015, I started my civil engineering degree at Dalhousie University in Halifax. And in my later years, I did co-op terms with a general contractor doing field coordination, estimating, and procurement, which really gave me a lot of skills that I didn't know then that would build on later on to a building science. So really some of those core skills that I learned was understanding and reading contract documents, specifically architectural drawings, product submittals, understanding construction sequencing. And as I was those skills over time, I realized I became a lot more interested in architectural features and not necessarily the traditional civil route of bridges or structural or water resources. I really was interested in building specifically and how those architectural features came about. So in May of 2020, the peak of the pandemic of course, I graduated my civil engineering degree. Luckily during this time, the construction sector slowed down a bit, but it did not completely shut down. So there were still some prospects for job hunting. An important tool that I used during that time was networking. Like I said, I did civil engineering. Unfortunately, at my school, I didn't have any courses related to building science. I didn't have any programs at my school, but I did attend a seminar that a company put on highlighting the different careers that they offered. And one of those were building science. It was the first time I had been introduced, and just because of that interest, I reached out to the person and started to learn more and more. I did a lot of independent research, looking online for papers, building science, knowledge, attended 
any webinars or guest lectures that I could see online and continuously chatted with people in the industry. Because from what I understand, building science and building envelope field is still much growing in Canada. And I still tell my job title to many people and they have no idea what I do. So it was still new. So having that research and networking is really how I got to learn a lot more of what building science was about and where I can possibly work with it. So with that, I really started my building science career immediately after university. I got the opportunity to work with a company in Halifax and now in Ottawa with Morris and Hirschville in Toronto. So building science really took me all over Canada and continues to do because it's so applicable to buildings across many different types and many different regions and obviously the subclimates of Canada itself. So a typical day in the life is not typical at all. It varies so much. I can have a week where I'm 100% in the field and I can have weeks where I'm 100% in the office. But overall, I would say I have a good balance of being on site and writing reports and doing study to further my knowledge in building science. So one of the things that I touched on a little bit is construction inspection. So I would go on site, review the installation of glazing, review the installation of cladding systems, and review with the quality of this installation and how well it is installed if it's as per the specifications. Another thing I do as a building science consultant is field performance testing. So what I have shown is a picture of a water infiltration test that we were performing on a sliding door. Part of building science is testing to see if the performance of these building elements are performing as they should and as optimal for what we're looking for. And with building envelopes, we want to ensure that there's zero water infiltration. So doing field performance tests like this is often a very good way on the field to test if our wall, if our window will perform as we expect it to or as per the standard requires. And then beyond that, it's report writing, documenting all of our findings in the field, documenting our observations, drafting proposals for new projects and new projects, reviewing architectural drawings and writing site visit reports of my findings on site. So some sample building science projects, they really range. So we can do new construction consulting, building envelope commissioning, field performance testing and monitoring, retrofits and heritage restoration, building thermal analyses, and energy modeling. So I'll touch a little bit on some of these items. So one with new construction reviews, we help with reviewing the envelope from start to finish. So in this first photo, I have wall assembly progress reviews just when they started the exterior sheathing on the building. So as a building sign consultant, something I would be looking for on site is the sheathing lining up. Are there gaps to accommodate for deflection in the building, in the wall assembly? Are the sheathing aligned properly? Are there proper tie-ins of the window membrane to that sheathing. So some of the things, are they using the proper primer on site? Things that will ensure that our building envelope is done efficiently at the end. In the second photo, I have roofing assembly progress reviews. So similar strategy, but now with roofing. Are they applying the primer that was assigned as a part of this assembly? Are the elements constructed in the correct order? Are the temperatures, the exterior temperatures aligned for that? One thing that new construction also leads to is a little bit of sustainability work. So building envelope commissioning is acting really as a building envelope consultant, but in a third party capacity, and that helps to support lead building, new building commission, enhanced commissioning credits and attain a certain lead, gold, silver, platinum certifications for new buildings, especially when a lot of buildings 
both in the private and government sector are targeting to have sustainability certification, green buildings, high performance buildings. So with field performance and monitoring, it's what I touch a little bit on with the water infiltration testing, things that we can do to ensure that our building is not only performing as the way it should, but we have quantifiable results to reflect that. So the first photo, again, is another water infiltration testing on an assembly. The second photo, we do thermographic scans to see if we can see some of the energy loss points throughout our building envelope. And then the third is third photo shows the whole building air leakage testing and pressurizing an entire building to see if we can see those points of weakness throughout our building. Then with retrofit and heritage restoration, looking at some of, for example, old brick condition assessments that currently exist, but we want to maintain those for cultural and heritage significance. Sometimes we can't simply demolish a building or cover it up. We want to see what is the capacity that we can leave this at the exterior and just do smaller renovations to it. The third would be with building envelope, with building thermal analysis and modeling. There is one unique tool called the thermalenvelope.ca online that was developed by Morris and Hirschfeld that you can do some of these thermal bridging calculations. So thermal bridging is the heat loss through a building, and we want to minimize the heat loss through our building envelope. So at assemblies that are critical, like at the power pit, at the wall assembly, at junctions between the floor slab and the window, these are our points of heat loss. And as a building science consultant, we assess all those assemblies and look at where can we improve or swap out for alternative products, alternative arrangements. So this tool is one of those resources that really highlights what in the deeper technical aspect of what a building science consultant does. And it provides samples, it provides products that we have worked with industry partners to confirm that, okay, these have minimized as much heat loss as we can through those different areas. So I would highly recommend becoming a building scientist, a building science consultant. I think one of my favorite things about being a building science consultant is that I get to see a lot of buildings throughout different cities. It helps really to get familiar with an area while improving these projects and working towards a more efficient, more green. I get to work on a wide variety of projects from high 30 and 40 story plus high rises to low income residential homes or community housing, which really shows the spectrum of what you can work on in working in the building sector. And it really gives me a deeper appreciation of how the elements of a building interact with each other. A lot of people take for granted that, okay, we have these window systems or this certain type of construction, but really understanding how those work together and how they will impact our us using the building and the future impact on our community later on. I think that's really one of my favorite things about being in building science and making a little difference in our community. Thank you, Chloe. If you want to reach out to me more, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and or at Morrison Hirschfield. I really love talking about building science and I think it's a really interesting field. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Yes, thank you so much for your presentation. And I know you mentioned about the day in your life and your favorite part about your job, but were there any challenges to this job? Yeah, I think one of the greatest challenges, which is that there is so much to learn. There really is. And not just looking at one element and how this particular product will work. You have to consider how it will work in 
relation to your city, how it will work in relation to that building and how it will interact with the other items in that building. There's so much to learn in terms of research, in terms of codes and standards and the variety of products. So I think the biggest challenge is it's a constant learning. So there's never a day where I feel like, okay, I, I am perfect at this. I know it because there's always something new to learn. Yes, absolutely. And how would you see yourself like evolving in this industry? I think one of the greatest things about building science is that is becoming that specialist. So right now I highlighted a broad range of different services and different areas of the building that I can work on, which gives me a great understanding of the whole building as a whole, but later on in my career, really zeroing and specializing in one particular aspect of a building and becoming a specialist in that area. Thank you so much. Sierra, for you, what is your advice for someone like just getting started in the energy efficiency sector? My greatest recommendation would be to do more research, to find as much knowledge as you can out there and to reach out to people in the community. I found that people in the building science sector, building enclosure sector, they're very open and they want to learn. It's a growing field. So if you are interested, feel free to reach out to someone that you see is a building scientist or someone who works in that sector because they are very interested to share their projects. And if you had questions about your own, reaching out to say, this has been interesting and really networking and broadening the horizon. Thank you, Sierra. We have one question on the chat. So what is your favorite part of being a building? I think my favorite part about being a building science is really that you do that investigation and field work. There is a lot of going on site, taking measurements, doing pull tests, doing really doing investigation work and seeing what could possibly be the solution or possibly be the best way to optimize. It's constant and constant learning. I think that's my favorite part. Thank you. We have another question. So is there any heavy physical demand for your role? Yeah, I would say not heavy physical demand, but it's definitely a, a very active role. When you're dealing with a building envelope and buildings vary from two stories to 30, 40 stories, doing a construction review can vary quite a bit. You can be going up and down stairs, circling the entire envelope of a building. So it can be physically demanding on some days. But like I said, the variation of field work to office is always a balance. So you might have two heavy days on the field, but then another two or three days just writing the report. So it varies quite a bit. Thank you. I don't see any questions coming in. So thank you so much, Sierra, for your presentation. It was really nice to talk to you and to learn more about your position. So I'm going to wrap things up. And Sierra, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story. For everyone who joined us today, your time and attention is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with either of us after the call. And one final thank you to our sponsor, Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.